What if I told you that your running performance doesn't actually start in your legs? What if I told you that the reason you find yourself gasping for air at the end of a 5k? Or the reason your legs feel like they are on fire at kilometer 30 of a marathon? Has nothing to do with how strong your muscles are? The truth is, the secret engine of every great runner isn't just muscle mass. It isn't even your lung capacity. It is something much smaller, something invisible to the naked eye. But it is the single most important factor in whether you finish strong or you crash and burn. It is your mitochondria. When we talk about endurance running, we usually obsess over external things. We talk about carbon-plated shoes, we talk about carbohydrate gels, we talk about GPS watches and split times. But the real story of performance is being written at a microscopic level. These tiny structures inside your cells are the power plants of your body. They are the machines that take the air you breathe and the food you eat and convert them into movement. And the science is absolutely clear on this. The runner with the most mitochondria and the most efficient mitochondria wins. Today, we are going to dive deep inside the cell. I am going to show you exactly how this biological machinery works, why it is the bottleneck holding you back, and most importantly, how you can manipulate your training to build an engine that simply refuses to quit. To understand why you get tired, we have to start with the basics of fuel. Every time you take a stride, your muscles need energy. But your muscles cannot use a bowl of pasta or a piece of fat directly. They need to convert that food into a specific form of chemical currency called ATP. ATP is the only fuel your muscles accept. Without ATP, there is no contraction. There is no movement. You freeze. This is where the mitochondria come in. They are like microscopic furnaces sitting inside your muscle fibers. Their job is a four-step process. They take in fuel, like glucose or fatty acids. They take in oxygen from your blood. They burn that fuel, and they pump out ATP. This leads us to the simple equation of endurance performance. The more mitochondria you have, the more oxygen you can process at any given second, and the more oxygen you can process, the more ATP you can produce aerobically. What does this mean for you on the road? It means you can run faster for longer without producing lactic acid. When you see an elite marathoner running at a 255 per kilometer pace and looking like they are just jogging in the park, it is not because they have magic lungs. It is because their muscle fibers are so densely packed with mitochondria that their body can produce massive amounts of energy using mostly oxygen and fat without ever stressing the system. But here's where it gets fascinating. Scientific research has shown us that training doesn't just improve your mitochondria in one way. It improves them in two distinct ways, and you need both if you want to reach your potential. The first adaptation is density. This is often called mitochondrial biogenesis. When you train, your body realizes it is running low on energy. This triggers a specific protein pathway that sends a distress signal to your DNA. The message is simple. We need more power plants. In response, your cells literally start building new mitochondria from scratch and increasing the size of the ones you already have. The result is that you have more furnaces to burn fuel. This is a volume game. The second adaptation is function. It is not enough to just have a lot of furnaces. They need to burn efficiently. Training makes your mitochondria smarter. This is often referred to as respiratory capacity. They learn to use oxygen more effectively, producing more ATP for every molecule of oxygen they consume. This is the definition of running economy at a cellular level. But the most critical upgrade regarding function is fuel selection. An untrained mitochondrion is lazy. It relies on sugar or glycogen, even at slow speeds. A highly trained mitochondrion, however, becomes a fat-burning machine. It learns to spare your limited sugar reserves and burn body fat for fuel, even at relatively fast paces. Since your body fat stores are practically unlimited compared to your glycogen stores, this is the only way to avoid the wall in a marathon. So, how do we take this science and turn it into a training plan? Many runners think that, to improve at a cellular level, every run needs to be a near-death experience. That is a myth. 
Your mitochondria need two completely different types of signals to reach their maximum potential. The first signal comes from volume. This is why we do long runs and easy runs. The long, slow distance run is the king of biogenesis. When you run for a long duration at a low intensity, specifically in zone 2, you slowly deplete your energy reserves and force the cell to work continuously for a long period. This chronic, low-level stress is the perfect signal for your body to build more mitochondria. Research has shown that even 6 to 8 weeks of consistent, low-intensity aerobic training can increase mitochondrial density by 50% or more. This is why coaches always tell you not to skip your easy runs. That is the time when you are building the factory. The second signal comes from intensity. If long runs build more mitochondria, high intensity intervals make them stronger. When you run at a high intensity close to your VO2 max or your lactate threshold, you create a massive energy crisis inside the cell. The pH level drops causing acidity and oxygen becomes scarce. This shock forces the existing mitochondria to become more efficient. They learn to clear the waste products of fatigue and operate under high pressure. Therefore, the secret to endurance isn't choosing between slow or fast running, it is the combination. It is polarized training. You need a lot of time running slowly to increase the number of mitochondria, and you need a small amount of time running very fast to increase their power. There is also a third factor that is often overlooked. Nutrition. Since mitochondria are the engines, carbohydrates and fats are the fuel. There is a strategy known as training low that can supercharge your results. Occasionally performing an easy morning run in a fasted state, meaning with low glycogen stores can act as a super stimulus. Because there is no sugar readily available, the mitochondria are forced to become incredibly efficient at burning fat to keep you moving. However, a word of caution. This is a stressor. You should not do this during hard interval sessions, and you should not do it every day because it can lead to hormonal burnout. It is a tool to be used wisely, not a lifestyle. Finally, we have to talk about aging. One of the main reasons endurance declines as we get older is the natural decay of mitochondrial function. After the age of 40, if you are sedentary, your mitochondria literally die off and become dysfunctional. This leads to fatigue, weight gain, and the feeling of getting old. But here is the good news. Endurance exercise is the antidote. Studies on masters runners in their 60s and 70s have shown that they have the same mitochondrial health and density as 20-year-olds who do not exercise. You cannot stop time, but you can stop the decay of your engine. Running literally keeps your cells young. Mitochondria are the hidden secret of endurance. You cannot see them in the mirror like you can see your quad muscles. But they are there. And they are waiting for your commands. Every time you step out the door for that long Sunday run, you are not just logging miles, you are building new power plants. Every time you push through the burn of a final interval, you are upgrading those plants to be more efficient. And every time you prioritize sleep and recovery, you are allowing your body to finish the construction. If you feel like you have hit a plateau, if you feel like your endurance is stagnant despite your efforts, the problem likely isn't in your legs, it is in your cells. You need a plan that targets that microscopic machinery. This video gave you the science. It explained the why, but the how is a different story. What is the exact ratio of slow to fast running for your specific physiology? How long does a run need to be to trigger biogenesis without causing injury? How do you balance nutritional stress with recovery? A generic plan downloaded from the internet does not know your biology. If you want to maximize your endurance by training your mitochondria the smart way, let's build a plan that is based on your unique data. The process is simple. Send me an email at jimkiriak at gmail.com with the subject line mitochondria or training. Or send a message on WhatsApp or Viber at 0030-6937-208-987. Let's stop training blindly. Let's build your engine cell by cell. Running Coach Demetrius, Master of Science and Sports Science. Your running journey powered by science.